Hey everyone! In this video, I'll show you everything that you need to know on recording your voice for your video. First, I'll go over all the equipment that I use and how to choose a location and set up that equipment. Then I'll get into how to actually record your voice and along the way I'll give you some tips on how to sound your best. Then I'll go over looking at your recording in the screencasting program Explain Everything and I'll talk about how you can fix your mistakes using that program. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, now before I talk about how to actually record your voice, I want to spend some time talking about some of the equipment that I use. Now, you don't have to use all this equipment because your tablet has a speaker on it, but if you want your video to sound really professional and your voice to sound good, I highly recommend investing in some sound equipment. And it's not as costly as you might think. All of the sound equipment shown here, not including the iPad, costs somewhere in the area of two to $300 total. And if that's a lot for you, remember that if you know other people that wanna make videos, you can always share in the investment of this video, or maybe your school or department can buy it for you and it'll be available to whoever wants to use it. And that can actually work because I really only spend about maybe five to 10% of my total video production time on recording my voice. So you really don't need this equipment that often, but when you do need to record your voice, it can really help you sound a lot better. Now, if you're like me and record at home a lot, having your own set of equipment is really nice. So I do recommend investing in this equipment. So let's go through everything one by one. Um, the first and most important piece of equipment is this right here. This is a Blue Yeti condenser microphone. And you can get one of these for, you know, maybe 150, 200 bucks. And this is a microphone stand. It goes up and down. Um, it's locked right now. But uh, microphone stands pretty important because if you're like me, you're used to teaching while standing up. And you also breathe a lot better and just generally speak a lot better when you're standing up. So the microphone stand can make sure that your microphone is at the level of your mouth so you can speak and breathe comfortably while you're recording your voice. Now, it screws right onto the microphone stand, so I'm just going to unscrew it so I can show you a little bit more about the microphone. Okay. Now, this condenser microphone, um, you wanna make sure that you use it with the, the label, the logo, the blue logo facing you, okay? It will not pick up as much audio on the other side of the mic, so make sure the label is facing you. Now, it should also rest about maybe seven inches or so from your mouth when you're talking about it. So when we're setting up our mic in uh, the closet, which we'll do in a minute, I'll show you how to do that. Now, there are a couple of settings that you want to make sure are correct on this mic before you start recording. Uh, on the front is a button for muting the microphone. I don't really use that that often. When you plug this in, you're gonna see this light come on. That does not mean that the microphone is muted. It just means that the microphone is on. If you wanna mute it, you have to press that button and it'll blink. That means the mic is muted. This dial right here is for the volume if you want to listen to your own recording while or after you're making it. And I recommend doing this because it helps you kind of find your voice and through a little bit of trial and error, settle on a style of speaking, a tone, things like that, just to make your voice sound better. Um, so it makes it a lot easier to listen to your own recording. And if you do this and plug in, you know, a pair of um, just earbuds or just normal headphones that you probably have lying around, um, you don't have to unplug your iPad every time you wanna to listen to your own recording to make sure it's okay. So um, I'll show you more about that when we actually do the audio recording, but that's where the, um, you know, the, the headphones or the earbuds can plug in. There's a jack right at the bottom of the mic. Okay. Now, to actually provide power to the microphone, it's also called a USB mic because one end, and this is just the wire that comes with the mic, wires can get tangled sometimes, okay? One end just plugs right into the mic, and the other end is just a USB. 
So the USB can go right into your computer if you want to record audio at the same time as showing what's going on on your computer screen. Now, that's not how you're gonna do a screencast because you're gonna use the screencasting program on your tablet, but it is how I actually made the last two videos on script writing and script editing because I actually wanted to show you what was going on on my computer screen instead of actually working in a screencasting program on my iPad. So if you want to do that, you actually don't need an adapter. You can just plug this right into your computer and your computer should just automatically sense it. This is pretty much plug and play. There's no setup needed. You just plug it in and it works. Uh, it can work for both Mac and PC. Now, if you have an iPad like me as your tablet, you need an adapter. So I have a USB lightning adapter here. The USB goes in this end and the lightning and goes right into the iPad. Okay, so now when I actually record something within, within Explain Everything on my iPad, it will get the sound, it will pick up the sound from the microphone. And it pretty much just automatically does that. Like I said, it's plug and play. There's not much setup needed. Okay, so let's see what else we have here. Next we have our pop filter, and this goes right on your microphone stand, and I'll put my microphone back on the microphone stand so you can see this. Just screws on like this. Okay, and the pop filter just attaches right to the microphone stand and goes right in front of your microphone. I put it about three, four inches in front of the mic, so it goes between your mouth and the microphone. And this just protects the mic from the inevitable spit that will come out of your mouth while you're recording. And it also protects against what are called plosives. Um, these are hard P sounds that can just kind of mess with your audio. You can look them up if you want, uh, but I do use a pop filter while recording. Okay. Oh, and I almost forgot, there are two other very important settings on your Blue Yeti mic. And I'll show you those. One is the gain, and that pretty much determines how loud your audio is going to be. And you can play with that, but I set mine to about 10 o'clock on the dial. Um, I find that it's a good compromise between not picking up too much background noise and making the recording loud enough so that it sounds good. This dial down here is the pattern dial, and I'm not gonna get into what all these different modes are. You can look them up in the Blue Yeti microphone manual if you want, um, but the mode that you wanna use for voice recording is called the cardoid mode, and that mode looks like a circle with a little dent at the bottom of it. So that's the mode that you want while recording your voice. So make sure your mic is set to cardioid mode before you start recording. Okay. Now last, um, I just have a lapel microphone here. Okay. And this just can attach to your shirt or lapel. And I almost actually never use this while recording audio, but if you are going to be doing any moving around, while recording your audio, you might want to use this. Um, let's say you're you know, doing a lab demonstration or something like that, or, or outside, um, you may want to use a lapel mic because you know, um, it's kind of inconvenient to have this big thing follow you around, unless you have an audio engineer you know, following you around with a boom mic, um, you're probably going to just want to use a lapel mic. Like I said, I don't use this that often, but if you're doing something like that, you may want to use it. Uh, this just also has an audio jack, which can plug right into your iPad. Okay, so I think that's all the equipment I wanted to talk about. Next, we'll talk about how to actually record your voice. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do when you set up for audio recording is choose a quiet location. And it doesn't have to be a closet like I've chosen, but I live in a city and I have a toddler. So my house can get pretty loud. So I really 
kind of have to record in a closet to make it quiet enough for the microphone not to pick up other sounds. But hopefully you live in a little bit of a quieter place and you can just do it in a relatively quiet room. I recommend choosing the room, if you can, that's farthest away from the road, so you'll pick up less sounds from cars passing by. Now, the first thing you probably notice is that I have a large, heavy blanket hung around the microphone. And this is to reduce echo. So when I'm speaking, the sound of my voice is going to bounce off of these walls and then bounce back to the microphone. And that will give my voice a little bit of an echo. Now, to prevent that, you can put something, you know, kind of absorbent of sound around the microphone to kind of catch that sound bouncing back towards the microphone. So at this point, I'll give you a little bit of a demonstration to show how doing this can reduce the echo on your voice. Okay, so to demonstrate this, I've hooked up my microphone back up to my smartphone, and so you're hearing my voice coming through my microphone. And there's probably not too much echo in my voice right now because I'm recording in my office and there are a lot of shelves and books and things on the walls, and there's carpet on the floor. So all of that will help reduce the echo that's making it back to your microphone. However, my voice probably does sound a little bit thin. And so to help fix that and to help reduce the echo, like I said before, you can surround the microphone with some kind of sound absorbent material. So to demonstrate this, I'll just use my coat and I'm going to put my coat over both my head and the microphone just to demonstrate the full effect of this. And so I'm talking into the microphone, talking into the microphone in the same tone and volume that I have been using all along, still the same distance from the microphone. And you can hear that my voice gets just a little bit richer and sounds a little bit nicer. So I'm not suggesting that you record with a jacket over your head, that's silly, but by surrounding the microphone by some sound absorbent material on top and on the sides, you can make your voice sound just a little bit better for your recording. Now on the bottom side of this blanket, as well as on the floor here, I have some pieces of tape and those pieces of tape serve to ensure that when I'm recording, my mouth stays a constant distance away from the microphone. So when I set up the mic in the closet, I make sure that the microphone is right under this piece of tape. And when I stand and do my voiceover, when I record my script, I make sure that I stand right on the piece of tape to make sure that my mouth is relatively the same distance from the microphone. So that's pretty important. And at this point, I'll show you why. I'll show you a quick demo on how, how far away you are from the microphone can actually change how your voice sounds. Okay, so here's why it's important for you to maintain a relatively constant distance between the microphone and your mouth. So right now, I'm speaking into the microphone and I'm just gonna go away from the mic and move back to it just to show you this effect. So I'm gonna keep speaking in my normal tone of voice, keep speaking in my normal tone of voice, and you can see that in addition to getting quieter, the tone of my voice is going up. And as I return to the microphone and get closer, my voice returns to its normal pitch and even becomes a little bit deeper. And even if I come way over here, even if I speak louder, so that the mic can pick up the same volume as it was detecting when I was closer, the pitch of my voice is still gonna be different. So all that is to say, you just wanna make sure that you're maintaining a relatively constant distance between the microphone and your mouth. Okay, now you also may notice that I have some rug on the bottom of this closet. This is just a remnant of a carpet that I had used in another room. And I put that down as well as I put some rocks and weights in the back of the closet to reduce the noise 
from the wood creaking when I shift my weight around the closet, because I tend to do that when I speak. It also, the rug anyway, also helps reduce the echo a little bit. So that can be helpful if you have a, a remnant of a rug or something, or even a blanket just lying around. Now here, I have a nice shelving unit that I have my iPad on with Explain Everything open on it. And I also have a nice place for my water because you're gonna drink a lot of water when you're recording your script and it's just nice not to have to leave where you're recording to do it. Now, of course, if you're not recording in a closet, your setup can be much different, but I do recommend making sure that you have a place for everything that you're gonna need while recording. Now, I have my laptop set up at the back of the closet and I actually installed a shelf at the back of the closet and put a few books on top of it to make sure that I can easily see my laptop while I'm standing up and speaking at the microphone. And I recommend that you do the same. Make sure that your laptop is comfortably visible so you can read the script while standing up and speaking right into the microphone. Okay, what else here? Well, we have my earbuds and I've got them plugged right into the microphone. So before I start recording, I'll just put them on. And I have the power cord for the mic and the adapter on that. And I'll just plug that right into Explain Everything. The iPad with Explain Everything on it. Okay. And that's pretty much my set up here. So next I'll go over how to actually record your audio. Okay, now before we get to recording, just a quick note on wardrobe. You do want to make sure that your clothes do not make noise when you're recording. So right now I'm wearing jeans and you can hear it's pretty loud. And I do tend to kind of shift my weight and move my legs a little bit while I'm recording. So I like to wear sweatpants and you might want to too, just to make sure that your clothes are not making noise because it is um, pretty distracting when you hear it on the recording. Okay, now before you spend a lot of time recording your entire script, uh, you may want to record just one paragraph just to do something that I call finding your voice. And it's basically just to make sure that you like how your voice is sounding and you like how the recording is coming out before spending a lot of time reciting your script and doing the recording for the entire video. So to do this, just take one paragraph, doesn't really matter which one, from your script and just recite that and record it in Explain Everything. And then listen to it closely and evaluate it with several criteria, the most important of which is probably pace. Make sure that you're not speaking too quickly. This is a pretty natural thing to do when you're nervous and doing something for the first time. I know I speak too quickly when I'm nervous, but make sure that your pace is nice and slow to medium because it will make your content a lot easier to understand and it will make the video easier to produce when it comes time to put your visuals into your video. Another thing you may want to listen for is mouth sounds like this. In fact, I, I kind of start noticing that in my own voice right now, so I'm just gonna take a drink of water that can help. Now, this microphone is a sensitive microphone, so it will pick those up, especially if you're pretty close to it like this but it's not such a big deal. It's not really gonna interfere with learning of your students that much. But if you do wanna to try to minimize it, remember to drink plenty of water and try to avoid eating anything before recording because that's what will produce a lot of phlegm in your mouth, which tends to make those sounds. Especially avoid anything sugary. That will just uh, make you sound like you have just a, a piece of chewing gum in your mouth. Um, if you do hear something like that, you can always just brush your teeth and rinse your mouth out a couple of times, and that generally helps. But really don't worry too much about that. It's not gonna interfere with learning that much. Now, you also wanna make sure that you're varying your tone a little bit. 
so you don't want to have a monotone voice like this. You want to vary your tone up and down just because it's just a little nicer to listen to and it will help keep the attention of your students. Now, um, you may get tired in the course of your recording and that's pretty normal. I find that I get tired more quickly doing this than I do teaching in person. Maybe it's just because I draw energy from the people that I'm teaching, I don't know, but I just find this really tiring. So I try to take a break, a five to 10 minute break, every page or so of my script. And I'm usually glad I do because when I come back, I find that my voice just sounds better and I'm more relaxed anyway. You also may want to listen for um, enunciation. You may want to make sure that you are pronouncing your words correctly and just that you're, you know, enunciating your words and, and not mumbling. So those are a few things you may want to listen for when you are recording your kind of sample paragraph to make sure that your voice sounds good and that you like how the recording is sounding before you jump into the entire script. Now, once you have this recording that you like, save it and listen to it before any time that you do a recording. It can help you kind of gain some confidence because it, you know, and this recording will remind you that you can sound good. And it will also remind you to do some of the things that I just mentioned to make sure that your audio recording is reaching the quality that you want it to be at. Um, it can also help you sound consistent from video to video. So um, I hope you'll find that aspect of preparing to do your recording useful. And next, we'll look at actually recording the script for the audio track of your video. Okay, oh, and I also wanna mention that, um, you know, don't expect to get that example paragraph uh, right the first time. You may have to re-record your voice several times before you arrive at a way of speaking that you like and that you think sounds good. Okay, now let's actually start recording. Now, um, the first thing I do while recording is just record 15 seconds of background noise. And that will be important later because it will allow us to remove background noise using Audacity when we get to post-production. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm just going to record 15 seconds of nothing. Okay. Oh, and as always, make sure that your mute button is not on when you're recording and make sure that your microphone is plugged in to your iPad. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten through almost an entire page of my script only to realize that the mute button was on or that the, the darn microphone wasn't plugged in. So make sure of those two things before you start. Okay, so now that I've recorded my background noise, I can start recording my script. I like to drink water before each paragraph. And before each paragraph, before I actually say it, I like to just read it, just to kind of load it into my memory. It just makes it easier to read out loud when I do that. So I'll do that. I'm just going to read my paragraph real quick. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to say the paragraph. And I tend to say just one paragraph at a time, take a break, drink have a drink of water, and then move on to the next paragraph. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take another drink of water. <clears throat> and then I'll record this paragraph. I'm going to hit the record button. I'll explain everything. <clears throat> In double fertilization, the two sperm cells have to make their way to the egg sac. First, pollen from the anther makes its way to the stigma. This can happen through wind, insects, or by other means. Once the pollen grain moves, okay, so I actually made a mistake there, but I'll just leave it in because I can easily remove it later with explain everything. Once there, 
the pollen grain germinates, creating a pollen tube, which travels down to the carpal towards the ovule. Okay, now I'll hit stop and I will put on my headphones. And I will go back and listen to my own recording just to make sure it sounds okay. And I'm going to unplug my iPad so you can actually hear it. In double fertilization, the two sperm cells have to make their way to the egg sac. First, pollen from the anther makes its way to the stigma. Okay, so I think that sounds okay. I would normally listen to the whole thing, but the interest of time, I won't. Okay, and then I'll move on to the next paragraph. And at the end of a page or so, I'll take a break. Now, um, remember that when you make a mistake, you don't have to stop recording. You can just um, take a pause, make a note to yourself maybe in the recording, and then just say what you messed up again. It's not that big a deal, and that's a nice thing about a screencasting program. It allows you to do that, so there's no need to get the perfect take. You don't have to do take after take. If you make a mistake, you can just fix it right away. Okay, so um, next I think we'll take a look at listening to your recording and fixing any mistakes and making sure that you're ready to move on to the next part of video production. Okay, so let's take another listen to the recording and remove any mistakes I made. Once the pollen grain moves, okay, so I actually made a mistake there, but I'll just leave it in because I can easily remove it later with explain everything. Okay, so to remove it, once again, you just hold down on the red line, hit start selection, and just highlight the entire region that you want to delete, assuming that you just want to delete something that you messed up. So delete and compact is what I want. And then let's listen to it again to make sure it's okay. This can happen through wind, insects, or by other means. Once there. Okay, so that sounds fine. Now notice down here, Explain Everything either has a mix feature or an insert feature for recording mode. It also has overwrite. So if you select insert, I can now record at this point in the recording and it will insert whatever I'm saying into this point in the recording. So for example, and I'm inserting something here at this point in the recording. Okay, now of course if you're gonna do this, you should actually hook up your microphone to the iPad so the sound will be consistent with the rest of the recording, but I didn't do that here because I'm just showing you how to do it. This can happen through wind, insects, or by other means. And I'm inserting something here at this point in the recording. Once there, the pollen grain... Okay, so this is a nice feature if you forget to mention something and want to mention it at some point in your recording. Now, you can also use the overwrite feature, but I don't recommend doing that because more often than not, I end up erasing something that I didn't want to erase, but that feature is there if you want to use it. Now, just a few quick things before I say farewell and tell you about the next video. Below this video is a link to a document with information on where you can buy the equipment mentioned in this video, as well as the cost of each item. But while having good audio equipment is important, even more important is that you be yourself while recording. If you're a teacher, you already know that you have to bring enthusiasm and authenticity to the classroom if you want your students to be interested in what you're teaching. Try to bring that same enthusiasm to your recording. Sometimes while recording, I imagine myself in a classroom talking to my students, and it helps me get excited for what is essentially talking to myself in a closet. So try to have fun with this, and if you think of some encouraging words or an interesting or funny anecdote while you're recording, just say it, 
there's no one looking over your shoulder and you can put whatever you want into your video. Okay, I've shown you how to record your voice for your video and now it's your turn. Choose a location, get your equipment set up, get your screencasting program and tablet and script all ready and get to work on that first sample paragraph. Do it as many times as you need to to get your voice and your pace right where you want it. Then actually record your entire script for your video. And after that, listen to it, identify any mistakes and fix them using explain everything. And finally, reward yourself because it's pretty hard work to do an audio recording, have a tasty beverage or a nice snack because I'm quite sure you will have earned it. Now, in the next video, I'll go over how to overlay your visuals on top of your audio recording using Explain Everything. See you all then.